Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Akilu Moroti if we are just meeting. You see, it's that time of the year when we are expected to think back on the many mercies that we have enjoyed. Despite the uniqueness of 2020, it is still a good time to look back over the years and detail accomplishments and pursuits and the likes. It is a good time to reminisce over moments and meditate over our voyage of arrival at the now and exhale in gratitudinous thoughts. When we do this, the texture, the temperament, and the complexion of our lives begin to crystallize before our very eyes. And we begin to perceive what God is up to in our lives. You see, thinking requires skill. It should be guided. You can't think anyhow. If you do, you would arrive at anyhow conclusions. If we think anyhow about 2020, if we paint 2020 with a broad stroke, we would arrive at the wrong conclusions. Our lives are the conclusion of our thoughts. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Your present state of being is a conclusion, your conclusion. Remember the Yoruba adage that says, Eniba monuru amokbedu. That is, the person who has the guts to indulge in skillful thinking will inadvertently bust out in thanksgiving. Directed and guided thinking requires guts. That is the point of this video. I want to challenge you to think critically about your state of affairs and about 2020 generally. So, has the year been a good one so far? Some will say no. Uh, it reminds me of another African proverb that says, Ba gunya sunu ewe, ba sebe sunu ekwekwa. It means even if the size of the pots is the configuration of the shell of granite, some will still feed fat. That is, no matter the size of the dish, there are those who are still going to be well fed. In other words, any given year will be fabulous for some and it will be dismal for others. Now, no one should minimize the impact of um, this once in a hundred years pandemic. Um, the impact this thing has had on our lives is unimaginable. It has changed our lives in ways no one could have ever imagined. But despite that, many have prospered and flourished in the midst of the pandemic. 600 American billionaires have added $1 trillion to their net worth in the year 2020. Yes, we lost celebrities in the year 2020, but we also lost celebrities in 2019 and 2018 and the years before that. My point is this, we will always have an assorted collection of outcomes. Some are buying cars, some are crashing them, some are marrying, some are breaking up, some are landing jobs, some are losing jobs, some are fulfilled, some are wanting. We human beings have a tendency to define our lives by our greatest wants. Yet, our lives are not the size of our wants. Look around you and you'll see that our lives are designed to be bigger, to be much better than our needs and our disappointments. See, there's a lot to be thankful for. Are you kidding me? There is a lot to be thankful for. Even in your disappointments, you are alive. See, there are folks who didn't make it this far. People we knew, people we disagreed with, people we loved, they are no more. Now, we don't belong to the league of people who thank God based solely on the misfortune of others. No, we don't and we shouldn't thank God because um, of the ill-fated events in other people's lives. That is purely sadistic. But isn't it interesting that disappointment and pain validate life? The dead can't be disappointed. The dead can't feel pain. Death is the cessation of all emotions, thoughts, and passions. When we die, all our wants and needs cease. So let me remind you again, you are alive. And don't ever forget that. In the words of a Nigerian philosopher, be thankful no matter what. Be thankful whatever what. <laughs> God watches out for the thankful. Remember the 10 lepers Jesus healed? Only one thought enough to make the trip back to give thanks. Only one was courageous enough to give thanks. You see, ingratitude, cowardice, and pride are strongly linked. Jesus noted the fact. Where are the others? He asked. Unthankfulness stumps even God. 
Ingratitude irritates divinity. Jesus was irritated about their ingratitude. Thankfulness is a measure of character. When we are thankful for past mercies, we qualify ourselves as a candidate for future grace. So my challenge to you in this video is to be that one grateful leper. You see, leprosy is social dysfunction. Lepers are social outcasts. And so if despite your background, you are making headway up the ladder in life, then God has cured you of leprosy. You should be thankful. If despite the economic situation, you still have food on your table, even if you got the food from a food pantry, God has cured you of leprosy. You should be thankful. If despite your immigration status, you have a job to go to, God has cured you of leprosy. Be thankful. If despite all that has been said about you, you still have the love and devotion of that special someone, then God has cured you of leprosy. Why would you be an ingrate? You should be thankful. If despite all you've been through, your name still gets on the list of VIPs at social functions, then God has cured you of leprosy. Be thankful. We should be thankful not only to God, but also to those who have contributed to the bank of mercy from which we daily draw. Don't say, ah, oh, but my parents understand I'm grateful. Oh, my mom and my dad understands that I'm grateful. Don't say my spouse knows I'm grateful. I don't, I don't need to tell her all the time. I don't need to tell him all the time. Don't say my pastor understands that I'm grateful. No, let them know. Verbalize it. Unspoken thankfulness shrinks into a carcass of ingratitude buried in the tomb of the heart. It stinks. Unless I be guilty of the very thing I preach against, I want to express my thanks. First, I want to thank God for everything. Where do I start? For his love, for his compassion, for his forgiveness. Um, I'll be gone with the wind and forgotten without, without his love and his compassion. I want to thank him for the gift of life, his gift of wisdom and uncommon discernment. In my life, God has been present, continuous, and future perfect. I thank God. I want to thank God for my beautiful wife, for the gift of her heart. What a woman God gave me. I can say without equivocation that I married a better person, a better human being than myself. Thank you for being the custodian of peace in our home. I also want to thank my parents for all the investment, time and energy they made in teaching me values. I want to thank my siblings um, for their love, their care and their support and their investments in my life as well. I want to thank my lesson teacher, Mr. Odua Yofadodun, for helping me appreciate the beauty of mathematics. My encounter with him um, single-handedly changed the course of my career. So thank you very much. I want to thank all my pastors, those who have labored over me at one point or the other to teach me God's words, to teach me God's ways and to minister to my needs. I want to thank them for doing more than was required of them. I know by now many of us should have written our goals for the year 2021, but if I could convince you, I would ask you to keep a diary of gratitude. At the end of the year, you can look back and indulge in the many mercies recorded therein. Before I go, I want to give you a chance to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If you would like to do so, please say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge I am a sinner, that Jesus died for me, and that you raised him from the dead on the third day. Please forgive my sins. I accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. You are now born again. Thank you so much, everyone, and I wish you a happy new year in advance. Bye-bye.